frugal crafter. Um, I'm ready for some spring. How about you? I'm going to draw some, um, I think these are cherry blossoms or maybe apple blossoms. I'm not absolutely 100% sure, but I found this beautiful photo after searching the word spring over at Paint My Photo. And um, this photo is by Andre Van de Sandy, I do believe. And I will put a link below in the video description so you can find the exact um, photo I am going from and I am just drawing here some petals that's a kind of little bit of a branch there and I'm just gonna gonna put um, five petals around these little stamens that I just sketched on I am telling you what oh my goodness we had so much snow on our roof and we have a metal roof and the reason we had a metal roof put on was because raking roofs stinks and if you have a metal roof, the snow melts right off of it. And, and it has worked very well like that for the past few years since we got that roof. But we've had so much snow this year that um, it just, and it's been so cold that on the front of the house, the, um, the snow didn't melt. So we had like, I don't know, two feet. I, in fact, two feet up to, at least, it was at least up to my knees. I had to climb on the roof and shovel it today. It was so awful. And I was just thinking, you know, it's going to warm up. It's going to melt. And um, my parents, you know, have always worked in the construction industry. They, um, they had stopped by and my mom was like, you've got way too much snow on that roof. That is not going to melt off. You're going to damage your home. And um, I'm like, oh, it's going to come off. It's going to come off. And then, um, and it hasn't. So she actually uh, surprised me today and um, motivated me to get up there and do some shoveling. <laughs> so, yeah, we had the roof rake out and uh, I was on a roof. Very, very snowy roof. I'm going to feel it tomorrow. I'm going to feel it. I'm feeling pretty sore right now, actually. Makes you, makes you realize how out of shape you are. But um, now that I'm in my studio and I am doing some painting, I'm feeling much better. I was feeling quite sorry for myself while this whole uh, this whole process was taking place. And, you know, it's a good thing Mom came by. She, my brother-in-law, my uh, sister's husband, came by too, and he did a lot of the work. And uh, it was it was very... I'm very thankful for that. Not what I plan on doing today, but uh, as I've mentioned before in my blog, I'm, I'm just behind. I, I'm behind in everything <laughs> this winter, and I guess, you know, at least my house won't cave in. You know, just have these behind times. And it's funny, because usually I catch up. You know, usually February is like when I catch up, January and February, but not so this year. <laughs> Oh my, um, I'm using a, this is just, you can use any sort of permanent pen you have. This is a um, Posca paint pen, which came in my Art Snacks box um, that they sent me to try out back in December, I think. And I just, um, I was curious about them because they had, and I'll put a link below if you want to go check them out, but they do like a monthly subscription box for art supplies. Um, and I think it's probably pretty cool if you don't have a lot of supplies already, but since I have so many supplies, I don't think it would be right for me just because it's going to be duplicates of things I already have in a lot of cases. So I decided that it wasn't for me, but it was kind of a neat little, um, neat little, uh, program they have there. All right. So I just wanted to put a few flowers in here. And even though I am looking at a reference photo, I'm kind of like eyeballing it and, um, kind of just doing my own thing as well because you know I just I want to gab and catch up with you guys I feel like I've been um I feel like I've been so absent <laughs> lately I feel like I need something right over here there's some flowers in the distance over there but I think I want to put like I don't know maybe a couple little buds or something there that's and I'm keeping this very sketchy so um so you can be a little more refined if you want to, but I think once we get painting, we're really not going to need it. And I feel like I want a, uh, a flower right here that's a little bit more full. And then we're going to be doing like a wet into wet background, and it's really going to be nice, I think. Going to be fun. Going to be springy. We're going to use some springy colors, gosh darn it, because if I see any more white, I think I might, I don't know what, need an intervention. Need some, <laughs> need some something, I don't know. Need a trip to the Bahamas. All right, so there. Uh, maybe just another little bud here to just kind of break things up. All right, so you know, you know what? It's a great paint. My photo is a really fun website because you have so many um, 
so many beautiful photos to pick from and you have permission to paint all them and I threw my bathrobe on over my clothes I was so cold I had to change my clothes after I came in from shoveling I was just freezing and black all right I'm gonna actually spray my water hopefully all that ink is dry <laughs> I don't think it is there but I actually kind of like the look it looks kind of like a sumi e so this is a great way to wet your background if you don't feel like using a brush and I don't have any of my real big brushes up here so this is gonna work, I'm totally telling you. And that's the other thing I think it's been really bugging me lately is that I just, I'm working upstairs, so, you know, I'm like any other woman that gets distracted when they see messes in their house and then they don't feel like they can create for themselves because they see all these messes in their house they feel like they ought to deal with first before they even attempt to do anything that they enjoy. And then to add to the ridiculousness, you know, you look or and you, because if I'm downstairs in my studio, I'm just in my studio, I'm surrounded by my supplies and my projects that I'm working on, and it's wonderful. But if, when I'm working upstairs, I'm distracted by, oh, look, there's the laundry, there's a sink full of dishes, my living room's a mess, the kids left this out, the kids left that out. And it's really, it doesn't make you feel like you want to create, and almost feel it makes you feel guilty for creating. And then, and then sometimes, you know, it, you might not just have the energy, you just don't, oh my gosh, it does, I don't even want to deal with that and then you end up wasting time doing something else or just feeling so hopeless that you feel like you're never going to catch up and then you end up not doing anything and it's like a self-defeating prophecy whereas if, if I was downstairs all morning in my studio working even if the house was a mess when I came upstairs you know and put the tea kettle on and that time I had the tea kettle on I could actually like make progress on things does anybody else feel like that and but then but if I'm upstairs in it and I'm just feeling defeated by it you don't get anything done and you end up wasting so much time and it's just they're wasting so, and, and it just like sucks your energy i don't know if anybody else feels that way maybe i'm just whining i don't know but um but if you do feel like that please know that you're not alone <laughs> oh my gosh i get so overwhelmed with house stuff i am kind of going around the flowers even though the paper's wet and it's gonna flow i just want to try to keep them a little bit lighter because i'm gonna do them with some pink i'm using cobalt blue you know what i need to do look at that my palette's a mess I'm going to clean those out really quick just by wetting them. And yes, I am using a water brush and yes, I am using a bucket of water because like I said before, I don't have all my supplies upstairs and I just, I'm feeling very lazy and I don't want to go downstairs. No, I don't. I do want to go downstairs, but it's too cold down there. It just make me depressed, I think. And um, so I have over the years or yeah, years. You know, as I've run out of paint in this little Cotman kit, I have replaced it with other colors. So, like, I this is, um, cr cr I'm not going to say it right, quince, quince, acridone, quin, 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 acridone rose, I think. Ah! Well, listen to me butcher, butcher some lovely paint names. I'm going to put some right on top of those flowers, too. Um, I prefer that to alizarin crimson, actually. So, that's what I put in my palette. I'm just, I feel like splashing some beautiful bright colors around. I'm so sick of the snow. Oh my goodness. We're almost in, we're almost to March. February is the shortest month because it feels like the longest month. Oh my, I need, I, I need springtime to arrive. It's been a rough winter. I don't know if anybody else is feeling this, but like yesterday I mentioned on my blog, I got my car stuck in a snowbank. Luckily it was my very own snowbank and not, you know, out in the world and I didn't have my kids with me because I already dropped them off at school, but it was just like one of those, are you kidding me? Come on, <laughs> you know, give me a break here. <laughs> and I usually try, I try to be upbeat, but the cold and the snow and just so much of it, I've just, boy, it's taken its toll on my mental health, I've got to tell you that, it really has. I've, um, I've gotten quite cranky quite cranky with the weather all right okay now I like this it's gonna dry a little bit lighter but that's okay I think I've, I'm gonna want some yellow in this uh, composition I think I'm gonna want some nice bright um, cadmium yellow Ooh, I like that now if I on a different day that wasn't so snowy and I hadn't been spending all kinds of time outside I might have chosen yellow ochre but I'm just thinking you know what I want some bright so that's what it's gonna be the thing about wetting your brush, uh, your paper with a um, with a spray bottle rather than a brush is that you're going to miss miss spots here and there. So the way your colors blend, like I've got some hard lines over here, for and some sparkle, which sparkle is nice when you have that white paper because it um, it makes it 
kind of have that, I don't know, sparkle is what it makes it have. It, it looks nice and bright and fresh. But then you've got these areas that are blending and they'll look really fun, like right there where I hit it with that, with that yellow. So um, it's kind of fun to do that once in a while. And, you know, I'm just, I'm using my water brush just as if it's a regular round paintbrush. And I do want to fill in some little spots here and there. But then I'm going to take my hair dryer, actually my daughter's hair dryer because I don't own a hair dryer, and I'm going to dry this up before we go on to the, the end. I'm just going to let this go as long as it takes. I'm not going to try to rush it and fit it into 20 minutes. I'm not going to, I'm just going to, it's going to take however long it takes you know, to get to the point where I'm happy with it, um, without speeding it up or anything. So, so there. And then if I get like a puddle like that, I can just set, set a, uh, tissue in there. Now people would ask me about the buckling of paper and stretching and what have you. I want to show you, I'm working on a Strathmore block, but it has, I don't know if you could tell, I think you can, if I tip my paper and you see the reflections, it has a little buckle in the middle, but once it dries, it's going to be flat again. Um, sometimes that happens and it's not a big deal and it's not going to be, it's not going to be buckled when it's dry, but sometimes it happens and you just have to watch out that you don't have puddles because if you have puddles, they're going to dry as blooms and you might not like that, which is kind of like a roughly edged watermark. Um, so just keep that in mind and you can like lighten areas too and just kind of tap it. And the reason you get blooms in the background is because some areas of the paper is dry quicker than others and you can kind of see one happening right there. If you see that little ruffly edge there, that's the same thing. Um, right there is one. So, you know, I think it looks kind of cool sometimes, but sometimes you don't want it, so it's just good to know. I'm going to dry this and we're going to come back and we're going to paint these lovely cherry blossoms. Okay, does it look any lighter? It's some, It's hard for me to tell, but you could probably tell a little bit better going right from like wet paper to dry paper. Um, I also just wanted to mention how much art can refresh you. If you're feeling down in the dumps, if you're feeling bummed out, just taking 15 minutes even just to paint can make you have a whole new perspective on the world, I think. Um, I'm going to start by wetting the petals in this flower here. I'm going to wet... Um, I'm going to wet a couple of them. And you can see I'm reliquifying the, the yellow there because it is a um, because it is a watercolor. And I think that's a little too much yellow, so I'm going to blot that. And you can see how easily it lifts. That's because cadmium is a pigment color. I mean, not pigment. I'm sorry. It is a pigment. It's a um, organic pigment. Um, oh, my goodness gracious. Inorganic. It's a mineral color. <laughs> I'm telling you what. I should probably not attempt to like, teach you guys anything today. Um, but because it is um, a sedimentary mineral-based pigment, it will lift up really easily because it stays, the pigments are so large, the pigment particles is that they stay on top of the paper instead of sinking in like a dye-based pigment or a pigment that may be organic in matter, like coming from a plant or whatnot. And they also tend to be the most stable of colors, uh, the mineral pigments. So I'm just going to wet these petals. I think I'm going to wet each one of them now that I've actually gone around and and thought my process through a little bit. Um, the brush I'm using is, you could use a round. I'm using a cat's tongue because it's up here. It's a very versatile brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some of those, that pink color in there. I think it's, these aren't really dark flowers. So I, I that's one reason I've wet the, um, I've wet the paper. I wanna keep it kind of, kind of soft. There we go. Just kind of let it flow. I don't know if I wet that petal though. There we go. We will have to take a little time for ourselves, even if the house is, you know, <laughs> falling apart, <laughs> you know, because you'll be much more productive in the, um, for the rest of the day. It's kind of like when you're, they do the airplane demonstration, they say put, put the, the mask on yourself first before you try to help anybody else, and you got to take care of yourself first. I'm going to make myself a little bit of, um, of gray. I'm going to take a little bit of that blue that I've been using and I think I am going to use some burnt sienna because I know I'm going to want some, actually I'm going to use burnt umber just because it's a little bit cooler. And I'm going to add a little bit of that into my cobalt. I'm using cobalt instead of ultramarine, but you could use ultramarine if you want in this um, I want that a little bit more blue. In this project, I just thought it'd be a little bit lighter and fresher. To give the crinkly texture to my, my flowers, I'm actually going to take this paper towel and crunch, crunch it up and just kind of 
don't overdo this just a couple times and then you'll get kind of that crinkliness and I think I've got my credit card scraper tool here I can use oh you think so I've got such a mess over here on my desk I'm gonna pause it and find that sucker well no luck on finding the uh, the credit card piece I'm just gonna use this toothpick to scratch in some texture and veins this works pretty good and now I'm just gonna make do sometimes Oh yeah, I like that. Um, so that's going to dry before I add any more layers. I'm going to do the same technique on the other flowers that I have here. I kind of tone them and give them some color. I actually really like how the, the stamen lines in there kind of blurred because I didn't let them dry completely because it is an acrylic based pen, but you could use any sort of, um, any sort of permanent pen for a pen and ink technique. I just really like that Poshka. Posca? I think you call it Posca pen. I think I'm going to go a little brighter with the colors. I want to make sure they stand out from the background. Do a little bit of that bluey gray. And we can, you can go in and add more details and shadows later. I just like to get a nice base tone. We'll do our little crinkle crinkle here. And scrape in the lines. These kind of remind me of the crabapple blossoms on our crabapple trees here in Maine, which we'll see sometime in the future, hopefully. I felt like that needed a little bit of yellow because the other blossom had some in it. And our little like closed buds can be a little bit darker. I need these little closed buds here. Need some nice bright color nice bright springy color and I like working on the wet paper like this when I just wet a little area because you you can get some really nice areas where it will fade and some areas where it's just gonna be bold and I just kind of like that a little bit of um, a mystery but you know you don't know exactly what's gonna happen I just I like that can even go in here if I feel like I want a little bit more and it's still wet enough to blend but I mean I just love what happens there when it just kind of kind of swirls around a bit all right we're going to wet this flower over here it's a lot of the same thing it's kind of repetitive I guess you know you probably don't need to watch the whole thing and you get the gist but I do like hanging out with you even though it probably feels like one-sided because I'm doing all the talking but, well, not really, though, because when you guys talk to me in the comments, it's always, it's always nice. Sometimes we get some good conversations down there. It's fun. Oh, I've got this little guy. There we go. I had a class at the local library, and the librarian went to, um, put the, the, note on, the reminder up on Facebook. She wrote, she was, think happy little trees, happy little trees, come paint, or something like that. It was so cute. I was like, oh, yes, happy little trees. Pay no attention to the negative 10 degrees out there and come paint at the library. It's so hard to get motivated to go anywhere when it's cold, though. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I I'm so lucky that I work from home and I don't have to go out too much. But it's, it's just, it's so much, it's like... It's traveling, living in Maine in the winter is like having newborn twins. And I can, you know, I can really say that with truth because I had newborn twins and a one-year-old at the same time. And it's like anytime you want to go somewhere or do anything, you have to plan so much. You have to make sure that you have this and you have that because you could go off the road or you could, you know, you can't, you have to make sure you're wearing snow boots or, and you have blankets in the car. And I mean, it's just, it's an ordeal. It is, and luckily, when I left, when I went to take the kids to their well checkups, I didn't take the interstate, because I don't, well, first of all, I'm not a big fan of the interstate, and secondly, especially in the city, and if the weather's bad, because I tend to drive slower than, um, than most, and I don't like to feel like I'm being pushed down the road, um, but there was like a 40 car pileup on I-95 between Bangor and Newport, and how scary, I mean, to see that, especially, you've got kids in the car, and there was, there was a lot of little you know slips and slides off the road as it was just you know just taking the you know 
the regular city streets. Can't imagine how bad it was. Hopefully everybody is safe. Because that's, ugh. It, it was very deceiving because hardly any place canceled school. And I was really surprised. I just think it's because the we've they've missed so many school days already that the uh, principals don't want to have them in. You know, they don't want the kids to be in school all summer. But man, keep them home and keep them safe. So what if you have to go to school an extra day in the summer, you know? And we'll probably have like, you know, a couple a couple years with no snow. But man, usually it's one or the other. You get the snow or you get the cold, but this year it's been both. It's been it's been brutal. And I've lived in Maine for over thirty eight years and I can say that this is I think this is the worst winter we've had. All right, now let's see. I think I'm going to put my branch in and I'm going to use my, oh, you know, it just occurred to me that my palette's small enough that I could probably put that right over there and you could see it. Um, I'm going to use, oh, Burnt Umber. I'm so used to grabbing that Burnt Sienna. I'm going to use Burnt Umber though because that's the brown I've already used and I like to limit my palette because you tend to get a much more harmonious color when you do that. Oh, did you hear that noise? You know what that was? That was my computer. It's sitting right on the edge of my desk with the uh, with the paint my photo picture open, which I will link to so you can go check that out. Um, I was like, oh, it sounds like a fan. What is that? It's my computer. It can't be overheating <laughs> because it's not that warm. Although I did turn up the heat. I was just like, you know what? It's too cold. I need to feel warm. I need to feel like it may be warm. <laughs> There we go. Take my little branch in here. If you feel like adding more buds or anything like that, you can go ahead and do that. The nice thing about having a pen and ink base down is that um, it gives you a nice foundation to work from. Like I can add some more branches out here. I'm not exactly sure. It's weird looking at the photo. It kind of looks like the branch is coming down this way. But then I see some of the some of the blossoms going up the other way, so I'm just gonna keep it kind of vague, <laughs> I guess, because I'm not exactly sure. Like so, when in doubt, keep it vague. Okay, I want to put some leaves on, so I'm gonna go ahead and use some sap green. And actually, you know, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of yellow on the leaves first, like watery yellow. Ooh, that's kind of messy. I think I've gotten into some brown there. Do a little bit of yellow just to. Give it some warmth. And then go in with some sap green. Sap green is my favorite green. Sometimes you get a green and it's very um, fake looking. Like I, I don't like viridium that much. It could I mean there are it has its uses, but a lot of times it just seems maybe because it's minerally or something, it just seems very um, very fake. And anything with like a thalo cyan color base it seems also that has to have that same fakeness about it. So I like to I like to use a nice sap green. It's and, and hooker's green if I can't find sap green. And a little bit of that around the buds, I think. There. Oh, I just love the way it looks when it starts to blend around. And maybe just to give the indication of some some more um buds. I'm gonna flick a little bit of that. I flicked a little bit in there. It just gives you the the indication that I'm gonna do that with a bigger brush so I get some bigger sprinkles here. And you know what? I know some of you guys don't like this technique. Don't do it if you don't like it. It's your painting. You don't have to. You don't have to do it just because I'm doing it. I don't want you to do it because I'm doing it. I want you to do it because you want to do it, or leave it out. And you don't hurt. It won't hurt my feelings if you don't like that technique. I, it does not bother me one single bit. If you get up. Um, a splotch where you don't want it or one that's too dark, just blot it. It's not a big deal. But you know, it's important that your painting is what you want it to be, not what I want it to be, not what your neighbor wants it to be. Not what your husband or your wife wants it to be, it's what you want it to be. I want some buds over here, so I'm going to paint some in. I'm just going to... There we go. Oh, I love that. That's pretty easy, huh? We're going to have this sucker is going to be chocked full of flowers. We're not fooling around anymore. We've had enough of winter. We're going to have some buds on this baby. Yep, I'm probably going a little overboard, but you know, you, you can know when to say when. I don't know when to say when, but I'm sure you do. <laughs> oh 
my goodness, just sunny to see something growing. We got one of those arrow, arrow gardens for Christmas. I don't know if you've ever heard of those, but they're like these, um, these, I don't want to call them, they're not really a machine. They're kind of like, you got this, ah, I don't know what you want to call it. It's, you have like this, um, I'm just tapping on sap green, by the way. Um, it's a countertop almost like a lamp but it's got this base of water and you and it, you put these little pods of seeds in them in there and, and we got the um it's like garden kit and um so you it's got like herbs like herb garden kind of and um making some leaves i'm just kind of wiggling here with my brush um and so it's got basil a couple different kinds of basil and oregano and cilantro and all that stuff and so it grows, right? It has like a timer on it and it's got like a fluorescent light, like a daylight bulb. And so you can have wonderful things growing in your house. And I've used so much of the basil. I've made fresh pesto and um, I'm luckily not in charge of the up care and keeping of this, these plants because I don't have the gift. Jason tends to that luckily, but it's so, it's really nice. It's, it's nice to get the, um, to get all those fresh veggies in the middle of the winter, even if it's just a few herbs, it's still, gosh, it's nice to see something growing. I'm telling you. Um, you know, I think this would be, I, I did an art journal page with some cherry blossoms once, and I really like the way it looked, and I think this would also be really fun in an art journal. I'm going to add a little more color to this focal flower here, because it's seeming a little bland. And I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. I don't know about you, but at least have a chat, isn't it? All right, I gotta take a sneaky peek here at my computer screen, which is kind of a little hard to see. I feel like I need some um, some dots in the middle of the flower. <laughs> oh, I'm so technical. Um, and I'm gonna make them. I'm gonna make a mix of the brown and the yellow to make those little dots. Do -do -do. Let's put some right in there. This is kind of really taking on the feeling of that those Chinese. Um, or Japanese calligraphy like brush paintings and you know I kind of want to try that paint a lot of people are trying it right now it's uh, Ganzu Tambi or I I don't know I could just be making that up it sounds something like it looks something like that I uh, there's several youtubers are using them and they have like these um it's like an opaque watercolor from Japan and I just think they look like fun I want to try those I'm not big on opaque watercolors, but maybe it's just the packaging. I'm a real sucker for packaging. And they look really cute. <laughs> so, of course, I want to dry them. Um, I do like to try new products. I, it's kind of, I'm kind of at odds because, yes, I'm the frugal crafter. I want you to use what you have and, and you know, because, you know, what you spend on art supplies does not correlate with how much joy you get from them. But I do love to try the new things. And I know I'm not alone. <laughs> we all do, don't we? It's nice to try something new. I love the experimenting. I like to I like to try to copy some products, see if I can get the the uh, same effects with what I have. I, I just I think it's fun to you know try some new stuff. There we go. I'm lucky I live somewhere where it's easy to obtain product. Even if I have to mail order it, it's available. It's not. I know it's not the case everywhere. I feel like I need a little more weight up there, so I think I might put maybe some larger leaves maybe even just coming off the edge like it could be coming from another plant sometimes you have to kind of look at something abstractly to fill in what you need and every time I I have a video going that's kind of long it's over 20 minutes I'm like oh I feel like you know I'll apologize and every time I apologize I guess people are saying don't apologize you know we love the longer videos so I'm like refraining, I'm holding myself back from apologizing for the length of this video. <laughs> and I'm not voicing it over. <laughs> I'm glad that you guys are so cool with me just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. And I am just so fortunate that you guys, I don't know, that you hang out and that you paint with me and that you um, don't mind that I'm a complete <laughs> disorganized person sometimes. I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit so it's not so in the foreground. I'm going to pause the video so I can just look at this and think about it for a second, and then we'll come back and finish it together. Okay, I looked at this for about two minutes, and I blasted it with a hair dryer just to clear it, to dry up some areas. Now, any place where I have kind of morphed 
um, shapes, like I've got these two leaves here, I'm going to go in and um, define a little bit. So I've taken this green, sap green, and I'm just going to kind of paint, I'm painting it on the one in behind. Hopefully my head's not in the way. <laughs> my hair is just like sticking up in a million different ways. It's, yeah, it's bad, but it's all right because... I've been on the roof shoveling today, and uh, you know what? Glamour is not my thing today. Glamour is usually not my thing any day, unless I'm going out with my husband. But I like to be a little glamorous. All right, and I want to add maybe some little bits of pops of darker red in some of the buds. Some of that in there. Let's see, we in frame we are. We're cooking with fire. Oh, and I'm, and I'm standing up. I raised my um, my drafting table the other day so that I could work standing up and like I do downstairs because I think that it helps get me in the zone a little bit better. And so I'm like stretching over, just bending forward, and I'm like, oh, my back. That feels good on my back. I'm going to be a sore person tomorrow. <laughs> just I can just tell. I better take the Advil tonight just to kind of uh, prepare myself. Adding a little bit. I like how, like, how loose this is. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but you might want to try it though. If you're if you're somebody that likes to have everything super super detailed, and um, you might want to try it. It's it's not for everybody, but I think that there's a lot you can you can gain from it. You know, freeing up, having fun. It can be a little scary because you'll get a couple points in the course of a painting where you're like, oh my, that's not good at all. But it usually comes, usually come through, it usually works itself out. You can go in and soften anything too if you have, you know, just take a brush, add a little bit of water to it, and you don't lose your lines that you scraped in, which is really nice. They scribe the paper, so they're always there once you put them in there. I think that I'm pretty happy with this. Soften that up a little bit maybe. Um, and I think I'm ready to sign my name, and I'm thinking I might even crop this out a little bit more. So I'm going to sign over here. And I want to sign it with that red because red's my favorite color and it makes me feel happy. And I just have been feeling so blah in the snow and I want to sign my name with red. Some people sign their name with pens. I could use the marker if I wanted to that I was sketching with. I like, uh, I don't know, I like to make the, my signature part of the painting and sometimes big splashy lines is the best way to do that. It's 2015. Some people sign their checks wrong for the first few months. I signed my paintings wrong for the first few months. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. I do appreciate you watching it. Uh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Let your friends know if they want to learn how to paint too, because I am happy to teach everybody who wants to watch my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.